am not willing to say Dick Fold is making a comeback, but this is kind of a big deal. What do you think of it? Well, if I were an investor, at least I would ask some questions. Uh, Lehman destroyed itself in a fairly spectacular way and made mistakes that a number of other firms didn't make. So I think there's a lot to learn from the way Lehman went down. And what investors need to be asking themselves is, um, has Mr. Full learned those lessons this time around? Um, if I can give you a couple of lessons, the first one is listen to your risk manager. There were early warning signs already in 06 that there were serious problems in the market. The risk officer, Madeleine Antonchik, was regularly sending signals, we've got a problem here. She was simply disregarded and then in 07 was simply shunted aside and somebody else unqualified as a risk officer was put in her place. So the first question for an investor is, will Mr. Fold be listening to his risk officer this time around? And what I learned in my book was the difference between companies that survive turbulent times and companies that don't is the quality of their decision making. Do they take risk reward trade offs? Do they have a constructive dialogue between the people worried about the downside risk and the enthusiasts that say, you know, metal to the floor, pedal to the floor, uh, we're going full speed ahead. And that clearly didn't happen at Lehman. Um, All right, Tom, I want, you, I want you to stay with us. I want to bring in my market maker's partner, Eric Schatzker. You know, for me, this blows my mind that we're saying, you know what, Dick Fold, maybe he should be listening to those risk managers, especially back in 2008. People in risk management, that was truly the ghetto of the securities industry. Dick Fold never gave those people the Furthermore, time Furthermore, he's not running risk any longer. No. So, Tom, my question to you is this. How toxic should people like Dick Fold be viewed as? because it's been seven years since those decisions that ultimately brought down Lehman Brothers. And it's not just Dick Fold, it's Jimmy Kane. It's people like Joe Gregory, also from Lehman Brothers, or Bart McDade, or Skip McGee, the members of the executive committee, or it could be a Stan O'Neill, or a Dow Kim from Merrill Lynch, or a Chuck Prince and a Tom Harris from Citigroup. All of these people made similar decisions. To your point, they weren't listening to their risk committees, they weren't listening Oh, hold on a second. Hold Steph on a second. Stephanie's jumping. I I'm reading the headlines right now that are crossing from Dick Fold's comments where he says, Lehman employees owned 30% of the stock. We're all risk managers. I'm sorry. We're all risk managers? I worked in, a, in, I worked in investment banking for 15 years. I don't think that there were people in the industry, specifically 2006, 2007, who thought of themselves as risk officers so, for the organization because they had been given stock as part of their compensation reward. It underscores the point and the question. Tom, should these people be forgiven effectively or given another chance? Or is the, the calamity that they brought about in 2008 so great that, that you can't really give them that opportunity? Well, as an investor, the question is, has Mr. Full learned anything? Uh, one of his problems was he had been very successful in 1998 and thought he could do just about anything as we went into the crisis in 07, 08. So if he's learned something, and he's learned, for example, we're going to disclose everything to the SEC. Layman wasn't making proper disclosures. But he's not to running a public company also, any longer. He's running a private advisory business. I don't think well, he has many disclosure obligations and, and, to anybody. And to be honest, I'm, I just want to share with you, because you can't see them, uh, some more headlines crossing from his comments. And I have to say, for me, this sounds somewhat tone deaf, where he says, Lehman was one of the greatest investment banks on the street. He also goes on to say it was the perfect storm leading to the 2008 financial crisis. You can't simply say it was a perfect storm. Very bad, irresponsible decisions were made. And to say that it was one of the greatest investment banks, why? Because they were living it up? Because they were wheeling and dealing during the go-go days? When the market turned, it was not a great investment bank. It was not being managed well. And think about all the people who are not nearly as wealthy as Dick Fold, who lost their jobs and lost everything, and haven't been able to spend the last eight years sitting pretty being really rich. I think that if we were to take, and Tom, please jump in here anytime you want. If okay. we were to take Lehman's history up until, say, 2005, 2006, before firms like Lehman Brothers and Merrill Lynch started to chase the return on equity that Goldman Sachs was generating, 
they were great firms, but, right? But they, 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 they raised Goldman lots of money for young companies to go public. They arranged many mergers that turned out you know, to be uh, to sure create value sure for shareholders. Well, but maybe I, I maybe a lesser firm that didn't create such value or such great deals could be considered a premier bank because it didn't go under, because it didn't put the entire financial system at risk. Well, well, Goldman didn't go under. J.P. Morgan Chase didn't go under. They had their case of hubris afterwards with the London Whale. Um, Wells Fargo didn't go under. Toronto Dominion Bank didn't go under. There were CEOs who understood how to make the risk-reward trade-offs and understood they weren't simply going for the gold. Yes. They were going to be careful, were going to be measured. And Mr. Fuld, unfortunately, was not one of those people. Well, it was Dick so Fuld the, and Jimmy Cain and Stan O'Neill and Chuck Prince. The list goes on. Yep. I don't think we can pin the blame on Fuld alone, even though the bankruptcy of, of his firm was the catalyst for the financial crisis. But maybe we need to draw a distinction between yes. great firms and bad managers, right? Yes, Those guys, absolutely. and they were all guys except for Aaron Callan, who was the CFO of Lehman Brothers six months before the firm went under, well, were bad Antonio managers, Chico. right? And made bad decisions that ultimately caused their firms to fail. But, but the firms, an investment up until bank, the, in some cases, on, those Eric. firms had more than 100 years of history. But Eric, an investment bank is nothing if it's not its people. So if you say it was bad managers, but it's a great organization, it's not like they make a product, right? They're not and saying, the, well, it's mm. Panasonic and I love those TVs. Mm. It's Lehman Brothers. It's the individuals who work there. It's human capital. So if you don't like well, the, the players, is, you don't like the company. Tom? The problem is the CEO was a dominant CEO. He essentially dominated his board, according to the records we have. He essentially dominated his risk function. He dominated the people below him, and that's a real problem. You need a CEO who's going to listen, who's going to take feedback, who's going to act responsibly and cautiously, even when it looks as if one can go for the gold, as it did to Mr. Fold apparently in 07 and 08. Let's not forget here that shareholders bear some of the blame. CEOs and boards are incentivized to make certain decisions on the basis of the feedback they get from investors. If investors are pushing them and rewarding them to chase unattainable goals, they'll continue to do that. If they keep getting elected at the end, if the board members keep getting elected at the annual meeting every year, then they're not motivated or incentivized to change the way I that they govern on, the management. Wait, wait, does but that mean if I'm I keep sure. winning at the casino, I should just double down and double Unfortunately, down? Unfortunately, that's how people behave. I'm not and saying that's that that's good, good governance. We've learned a few things since then. All I'm saying is that much like there are many reasons for the financial crisis, there is more than one reason for Lehman Brothers' failure than Dick Fold alone. Without a doubt. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But in the end, you've got to look at the debt holders, and that apparently is part of the calculus that the government took. Can we let Lehman go down? Because it's the debt holders that don't get the upside of all right. that risk taking the way the shareholders do. Well, if you could have replayed that, if you could replay that movie today, Tom, would you have bailed Lehman Brothers out? Unfortunately, yes. The market was totally spooked, and it didn't work very well. But in the but end, then we would have really created the to... ultimate moral hazard. <laughs> if if we saved Lehman it. Brothers, then we would have. Then the government would have committed itself to saving everybody. Well, the government is pretty well committed to saving large, complex financial institutions, and Lehman was one of those. The trick is to make sure the government insists on good management early rather than late, that when there are warning signs, a CEO, even a dominant CEO like Mr. Fold, listens to those warning signs and reacts mm, to the warning signs. That sounds great, so we but what role, how can the government play that role? I don't, uh, quite honestly... I mean, there are Hold lots on, of ready? great public wait, servants wait, here. You know I don't here? trust the government to play that role, to decide when a CEO isn't making the right decisions. A and Tom, time and again we see that the government doesn't have the resources to have enough people Absolutely. in the seats I I as regulators, and those who have gone in to spend time as regulators to those banks weren't even taken seriously. Do you remember during the London Whale, the stories of regulators going into J.P. Yes. Morgan yes. with their clipboards and their brown <laughs> polyester suits, and J.P. Morgan people basically tell them to kick it. Yes, absolutely. That's not going to get solved. 
Well, it's got to get solved. And one of the critical issues is, does the CEO take feedback? And that includes taking feedback from the regulator. And if they don't take feedback from the regulator, and I will grant you, when somebody's making an awful lot of money, which Mr. Fould was for his firm until 07, 08, uh, when somebody's making an awful lot of money, it's really hard for a regulator to tell that person to stop taking risks. Well, then but let's that's actually... what we've got to do, or we're going to be back in the soup again. Then, Tom, how does that actually get sorted? Because what you've just noted is human nature. If you are Dick Fold, if you're this master of the universe, and somebody takes the Amtrak up from D.C. and is talking to you about your risk, you're not giving those people the time of day. And those regulators, they don't even want to necessarily be in that seat when they look at all these Wall Street guys making 5, 10, 20 times what they get paid. Uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's a core problem. And you can go one step farther and look at the structure of the Federal Reserve Bank in New York, where the banks themselves govern that organization which supervises the banks that it governs. We've got serious problems with our regulation. We've got to solve it. We can't solve it on the cheap. We've got to make regulation work. And if we don't, uh, we're going to be back in the same problem again. You're, you've described the problem beautifully.